Hey chat, Paki here, and I wanted to talk about the new Naga tribe and what's making it too strong right now and how we can sort of fix it and what I think is well designed and what is maybe not well designed about the tribe. Um, so if you watch my preview video uh, like a week ago or whatever, you'll you'll remember that I said that the, the design of spellcraft inherently makes Naga difficult to balance um, because you need to balance how strong you make the spells temporarily and you need to balance that against the scaling that you can get out of those spells. Um, obviously, you've probably noticed if you've been playing the strength of Tide Mistress Athissa. That's the scaling that we see um, is way too strong and the reason it's too strong is because of how easy it is to play a ton of spells now the difference between athissa and something like dark gaze elder or caligos or some like other builds that we've seen in the past is usually it requires you to spend um to start cycling units right and so you're limited by your resources to some degree because you're getting a free set of spells off of your spellcraft minions you're able to cycle way more than you normally are with other units and so if this is able to scale things up in an extremely rapid way that makes it so that you're out you're able to outstat basically any composition um on top of that you have access to a lot of utility especially the form of glow scale and glow scale is you know one of our other tier fives that we just see seeing play everywhere and so that in combination with glow scale in combination with the last card i want to talk about in this little section storm scale siren means that you're able to turn glow scale into two shields and a ton of free cast for every spellcraft minion you have on board that means that Athissa is not only scaling up your units extremely quickly for extremely low resource investment, you're also getting it on utility minions that have shields, which makes it harder for anything else to compete with Naga. The other card that sort of plays into this and the resource generation and ties into that is uh, Orgozoa the Tender. Orgozo the Tender is a spellcraft discover Naga, and Storm Scale Siren also procs that. So that's giving you more spellcraft minions to pump Athissa more. It's giving you the ability to discover triples because discovers are extremely strong, and you're able to proc it like a lot of times with Storm Scale Siren. So all these things in combination mean that you're able to scale things up super fast um, very consistently if you hit that combo and you're scaling up strong units with divine shields so how do we fix that athissa probably needs to be toned down on how much scaling you can give um right now it gives four friendly naga maybe that's something you tweak down to three friendly naga and then it's a little bit um less consistent with how it focuses and you need to be a little bit more wary about your cycle spot and, and buffing in that cycle spot because right now it's really consistent to get board wide buffs and if you reduce it by one uh buff there it would be a big reduction it would still be very strong in a lot of scaling um but it would tone it down a lot Storm scale siren storm scale siren is probably the biggest offender here and in my review i didn't sort of um view storm scale as that strong uh but recognizing how it combines with orgozoa and glow scale and athissa it's really providing too much value and that it's doubling the shields that you can get out of glow scale because you get the original spellcraft um from glow scale as well as getting the divine shield on itself athissa starts to scale up the glow scale and so those are relevant units and then the 
fact that it procs Orgozoa means that you're getting further spellcrafts, and that's just further allowing you to scale more, get more discovers, those triples that I was talking about, even on Storm Scale Siren itself, and you just sort of ramp out of control past um, being able to be caught by anyone else in the lobby. I think the fix to Storm Scale Siren is that legitimately it probably needs to be moved to at least tier four but probably may, maybe tier five even um with how strong it is with some of the other units and if you wanted to change some of the other things to make it so that um maybe like fellbound archer was a little bit different or on a different tier um, or critter wrangler or even corrupted myrmidon um you, you could maybe look at swapping those right i think that would be pretty interesting Critter Wrangler is another one that I sort of think like there's a few cards that are really quite good but are getting totally overlooked because of how strong the other Nagas is. Like Critter Wrangler works really well because you can buff something pretty easily for, for very little investment like 8 8 a turn and that's super effective if you have like a cleave or something on board where you're like taking in one or two different tribes into your naga build and so that's what allows you to play like a hybrid board which is really what i was excited about with nagas right is being able to play some of these hybrids and critter wrangler allows you to do that but it just pales in comparison to just running athisas and storm scale sirens and glow scales basically so that's something that I, I think that's like right underneath the surface. It could be really good if you tone some of that other stuff down to like let Critter Wrangler shine. And, you know, I think having a good five drop scale and a good four drop scale, uh, sorry, six drop scale is a nice balance there. Um, Corrupted Myrmidon is something that, again, it is really good in a Naga board if you can build it up its stats, but we don't see it getting played very often um, because usually you just already have other nagas on board that sort of make the whole thing work together and that's meaning that it doesn't really have uh, a place or by the time that you find it you're like well i don't really want to sell this other minion on board because it's 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 like creating this whole system that's working together and so corrupted myrmidon sort of gets overlooked as well and Eventide Brute is another one that's really, really good. It, it is really strong and really good right now, um, especially with how it interacts with Storm Shield Siren and the free resource generation. But again, it just like, unless you have it already, it's not something that you're picking up. And so that's something that I would like to see, uh, you know, not even change. I just, you know, if, if the other stuff gets changed, we could see it shining because it's still scaling quite a bit. And again, the big thing is that it's scaling for like zero gold investment and that's really good because oftentimes we see a lot of scaling be super dependent on cycling things and, and stuff you know we look at even something like peggy which is very similar to eventide root you, you have to be adding cards to your hand and cycling stuff because eventide root is when you cast a spell there's things like sun bacon where you're casting spells that cause it to grow as you're cycling but then the fact that you're getting those free spellcraft spells every turn is super good. So it'll be interesting. I think uh, the Naga are very much over tuned right now, um, but they've been super fun to play with. And I know a lot of people are enjoying them, but struggling with how strong they are. And so it's something that we'll see if uh, we see a, a patch to sort of balance them soon. And yeah, I think the big... The big things that need to be addressed are, are those four cards that we talked about. Storm Scale, Siren, Glow Scale, Athissa, and Orgozoa all probably need to be tweaked just a little bit down. And it would bring Nagas in line with everything else in the game. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below telling me what your thoughts are. Um, be sure to like uh, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you next time. As always, peace.